So I haven't done a video in a really long time and uh, I apologize, but life has been kind of crazy lately. So last weekend, uh, a few friends and I went to Tampa and we had a day of gluttony. And um, I shot a lot of footage, but unfortunately, um, a lot of the sound was unusable. And so um, I'm gonna try this video on a little bit of a different uh, approach as compared to the other Day of Gluttony videos. Uh, so I'm just gonna splice in some clips of what I did and what I ate and where I went. And then um, I'll just kind of narrate it so you guys can hear my thoughts on the food. Okay, so Tampa is about an hour and a half west of Orlando. And uh, we, yeah, met up on a Saturday, Saturday morning, and uh, decided to head over. And on the way there, it was, since it was kind of the morning time, um, we decided to stop in Lakeland um, to grab some food, uh, grab some pastries at one of my uh, just all-time favorite pastry places. It's called Born and Bread. Um, I really wish that they were around when I went to school uh, and lived in Lakeland, but they weren't so uh, it's kind of a real treat to be able to go there uh, and to get some pastries so born and bread uh, they're only open on Saturdays uh, pretty much from 8 to 12 when they run out they run out um, and I was able to get a number of different pastries uh, I got a cruffin that's kind of what they're known for they do uh, croissant dough uh, which is really difficult to work with but they they're one of the few places that does it and does it well uh, so I got a cruffin I got a banana uh, cruffin I also got a sweet potato and cheddar pastry um, those those very well put together um, I really appreciated how um, the sweet potato uh, pastry was a little bit savory a lot of places they kind of cop out and do uh, yeah, they do a sweet potato and it's just, just very sugary and things like that. But the cheddar and the uh, pastry really balanced out and um, yeah, and can't really complain about it. The cruffin again was, uh, was well done. Um, the filling, everything, all that stuff. So I got a lot of pastries to go as well um, to take back home and to enjoy. Um, and then I figured, hey, since we're in Lakeland, we might as well uh, go by the lake and, and check out the Poor Porker. Um, and so Poor Porker, um, it's in a little area. Uh, the Poor Porker is a food trailer. Um, they do beignets. Um, and it's in this little neat area. They have like a teepee in the middle and there's a bar and things like that. Um, there's usually a barbecue guy in that same area as well, but he wasn't there. But anyway, we decided to get some beignets. Uh, since it was fall, they had like a pumpkin pumpkin pie, some sort of beignet. Personally, I wasn't too crazy about it. The pumpkin was just really overpowering and the texture was funny and I didn't really like it, but it seemed like everybody else in the group liked it. We all ate it and then of course the regular ones were delicious as well. If you're gonna go to the Poor Porker, I personally like, they have a salted caramel one that's, that's really delicious. The beignets are very, very, uh, they're fluffy, they're made to order, so it takes a little bit of time for you to get it. Yeah, check it out if you're in Lakeland. We left Lakeland and headed to Tampa. We got there. Uh, traffic was a little hectic, but we, we managed to make it. And the first stop in Tampa was at the Oxford Exchange. Uh, we still didn't get enough caffeine in our system, so we decided to get some coffee and, and some tea. Buddy Brew Coffee in Oxford Exchange. It's pretty decent. Check it out. It's The ambiance is great. There's a restaurant in there as well, but the wait time was just crazy. Uh, so I recommend if you're gonna go eat there, make a reservation and, and check it out. Uh, if not, they have a bunch of places where you can just sit and chill and, and relax and things like that and just enjoy your cup of coffee or your cup of tea or whatever and, and just have a good few hours there. Uh, after the Oxford Exchange, we went to the hall on Franklin. So food halls are becoming a little bit more prevalent. Uh, it's a pretty interesting concept. It's a bunch of restaurants and stalls and vendors and they all kind of share a space. So it's kind of like a food court, but not really. In the Hall on Franklin, it's pretty. It's, it's very interesting. And um, we tried out a number of different foods. We got stuff from the North Star Eatery there, the Poke Rose, uh, the Melt Shop, and then Heights Fish Camp as well. At North Star Eatery, uh, we got a soft shell crab banh mi, and we also got coconut 
chicken wings. They weren't very good. Uh, the coconut chicken wings were just really sweet. The banh mi was nothing really to write home about. And the thing that bothered me was like it was really expensive. We also got a poke bowl from Poke Rose. And uh, you know, it was done really well. Uh, the flavors were, were delicious. The fish was fresh. Um, it was very well executed. Uh, it tasted more Korean than Japanese. Um, so a little bit more sesame and things like that um, But again, it's just it was really expensive. Uh, I think I paid $13 for a little tiny bowl I feel like if it was like four dollars cheaper uh, It would have been okay, but you know, that's just the kind of the nature of it uh, The milk shop we got a couple different sandwiches. Uh, there was like a, a tuna sandwich and then their version of a Italian beef from Chicago uh, that we got as well as a fry basket. Um, again, it's just expensive. Uh, I'm not sure that the price that I paid was worth what I ate, uh, especially the uh, Italian beef sandwich. It's just like two or three pieces of beef in the whole sandwich, and um, it just wasn't very filling. The tuna, I did appreciate it. It had a hint of lemon to it, uh, so the acid really helped cut through, and it was well balanced. Um, I enjoyed it. Uh, the fry basket, again, it was expensive but the cool thing about it is they have this uh, sauce bar and um, they just have a number of different sauces and yeah I was really excited to see some of the sauces that they had available for uh, for you to try there. Heights Fish Camp we got a fish dip it was you know whatever they forgot about it and then they brought it out and you know it was whatever. You know all in all Hall and Franklin uh, it's an interesting concept uh, if you're in the area check it out uh, it's you know, honestly, not something that I would go back to necessarily. I feel like there are places that uh, you could get the same kind of food for cheaper uh, and better quality uh, and more quantity as well. So uh, if you want to check it out, it's it's really pretty, like I said, and um, it's, it's worth checking out once. Uh, next, we went to Ulele. Um, they do, uh, they call it like native inspired cuisine. We got some beers there. We got some grilled oysters uh, as well as like okra fries. Uh, they're just kind of like deep fried okra or like uh, kind of lightly charred okra. It was good beer food. It was good bar food. Uh, it complemented the beer well. Uh, they brew their own beer and uh, what I had was delicious. And um, you know, unfortunately I was drinking it and a fly happened to kind of go into my beer as I was like, maybe three quarters of the way done, and the, the bar manager kind of saw what happened. And so uh, he was kind enough to let me try a beer flight on the house, and um, I had to try most of their beers. Yeah, if you're looking for a place to just kind of go and relax and to have a bite as, as well as, you know, a drink, uh, some good uh, local brews, uh, check them out. They're, they're pretty interesting. Um, following that, we went to Ichikoro, uh, it's a ramen place. So we, we got there at 4.50, they opened at 5 and um, for dinner service. And when we walked in, I was pretty surprised because like they, they had just opened for dinner and they were already packed. Uh, and so we kind of just grabbed the bar area uh, and it's you could kind of overlook the, the line. Um, and that was a very interesting perspective because I got to see uh, just a lot of what they're doing uh, to watch them cook and to get their meat and blast done and things like that and uh, unfortunately the food was kind of hit or miss uh, we got some bao buns and they were nothing great uh, the pickle was just really uh, overpowering and uh, the flavors didn't work at all um, the ramen I got I got a shoyu ramen and it was it was good uh, the broth was very very well executed uh, the temperature was great there was good chew in the noodles uh, things like that the uh, all the little accoutrement that you put in the ramen it was well seasoned uh, and then I got to the egg and the egg was a disappointment because it just it tasted like sake and uh, that's all I tasted I didn't taste the egg at all um, so maybe next time I'll substitute the egg for a different type of egg that they have or something like that but uh, all in all the ramen was pretty good uh, a couple of the other people at the table um, in our party, they got uh, soba noodles. Uh, don't get it. Uh, it wasn't good at all. Uh, if you go to a ramen place, just get ramen. Um, Ichikoro, I, I really like the decor there, the feel. Yeah, um, check them out. Next, we went 
uh, to Chop Chop Shop. It's kind of like my restaurant, actually. Um, they do like Korean fusion food, and they do like rice bowls and things like that. And I pretty much got all the proteins in the bowl, and uh, I asked for all the sauces on the side. And yeah, the feel that I got from the shop was, you know, it, it felt like home. Uh, it felt like my my restaurant. I, I really enjoyed, you know, kind of shooting the breeze with the owner. You know, just talking to him, seeing what his kind of philosophy for cooking was and it was really refreshing to to see somebody uh, see a restaurant tour that's kind of trying to do what i'm trying to do and um, just bring kind of asian food in, in an approachable way that's uh, it's also very delicious and so i really enjoyed it it was it was a lot of food uh, a lot of food um, but it was delicious and we were able to eat it all uh, and then we went across the street to rooster in the till um, this is a place that a lot of people like highly recommended. Uh, they said it's kind of a higher-end place. It's expensive. It's you know small plates, and you know you could enjoy it with a beer and things like that. And uh, so I kind of went into it with some higher expectations. And um, the place is you know the ambiance is great. The staff was knowledgeable. They were really helpful. Uh, they knew what they were talking about. And then. They have this like big open kitchen in the middle of the restaurant and so you can see what they're doing and uh, from what I could tell they they weren't like goofing off they they seemed pretty serious about cooking the food so you know I was really excited uh, I got uh, pork secreto which is supposed to be like this really tender succulent uh, delicious pork dish and it wasn't uh, they had these pickled shishito peppers on there that that's all I tasted the bok choy was it was a little bit mushy yeah the pork was tough and inedible and you know, I think all of us were like I don't think we can drink enough to make this edible at all so that was a disappointment I also got a beef shank that wasn't that great either because it, it had like just this kind of burnt garlic taste and then there's like this vinaigrette that they put on it so again it just the shank was very well cooked uh, it was tender pork tender um, and they had these like nice grits on the bottom but then i'll like take a bite and get these nice textures and then all of a sudden it would be ruined by the flavor of like vinegar and burnt garlic and parsley and you know just like it ruined it ruined the dish i think our check came out to something like 50 dollars, and all of us were like we we wasted our money coming here so i don't know maybe we didn't get the right dishes there but uh, unfortunately, that's that's somewhere that I don't I don't think I'll return to. It's, you know, that's not a big deal. If you want to check them out, that's that's cool. Uh, I, I don't recommend it. Uh, we kind of wound down the day by going to a tea spot, a Kalija tea. It hit the spot. It was it really calmed my stomach a little bit. And uh, yeah, we spent some time uh, just as friends playing games, uh, played apples to apples, things like that, and uh, enjoyed our drinks and. Uh, it was about closing time, so we kind of left, and um, I had this feeling like I didn't want to leave Tampa on just kind of that sour note uh, with Rooster in the Till. Uh, I was like, I was pretty disappointed about that. You know, there happened to be this little taco trailer called Tacos Con Mobile, and all the people that were eating there, none of them spoke English. Uh, so I was like, okay, well, I might as well get a taco or two. And uh, yeah, I ended up getting Horache, which is kind of this big it's not a taco but uh, like an open face taco I, I guess but uh, it's pretty big uh, I got it with Pastor, which is marinated pork it's one of my favorites uh, and that was that hit the spot it was like it was the perfect amount of spice and the salsa was delicious that I put on it and yeah all the all the toppings were just great they worked uh, the tortilla I really held up to it and yeah, it's it's kind of sad um, <laughs> that I feel like one of the best things I ate was this little, you know, from this little rinky dink uh, taco trailer. But I guess it's kind of the theme. Uh, that, that's a reoccurring theme in all of these, uh, you know, Day of Gluttony videos. Is I end the night eating at some taco place, and you know, I totally don't mind that. I, I love tacos. Uh, I grew up eating, you know, street tacos in Chicago and things like that, and it, and it brings back memories and. Uh, for the most part, all these like no-name places, they they're delicious. Uh, so yeah, so that that was kind of my day in Tampa. Uh, there were a lot of places that we went to. 
but there were a lot of places that are still on a, on a list um, that I'd like to go back and visit. Uh, unfortunately, Tampa is only like an hour and a half away, so um, who knows? I might go there. I might also, you know, do Day of Gluttony somewhere else in Florida. Uh, but yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, like and subscribe. Uh, if you like this format, uh, let me know. If you didn't like it, let me know. That's it.